this is kind of a difficult question, but I've 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 listened to you. I followed you for a very long time. I've heard you on some interviews, um, and I always thought that you had like a great outlook. So for people who don't know, you were part of the U.S. team, but you were left off the World Cup roster. What w- when that happened? I mean. That's something that you, you, most people, I would count myself in this, would be bitter for life. Um, like, how did that all break down, and how are you able to look at it and not be just angry all the time about it? That's a great man. That's that's. It, now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, There's I'm sorry. Reasons. I I just I, I I've heard you talk about it, and I've always been like, I've always just respected your take on everything. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's the easiest way to look at it. I'm right. more like you, where I. Like, I really wanted it to be there. My grandfather passed away 48 hours after that decision. Jesus. Um, And my family and my grandfather said at the time, first off, I was MVP of the league. I am technically an answer to the trivia question is who is the leading goal scorer for a calendar year and not go to the World Cup? Wow. It was me in 2006. I didn't go to the World Cup and still led the U.S. men's national team in goals scored. That gives me solace that guess what? I did the best I could. Yeah. I did the most I could. So it was his decision and he didn't want to bring me. So there it is. The toughest part about the entire thing was this 30 players were named to a roster. 23 went the seven players that were left on the um, substitutes bench for lack of a better word or the practice replacements, squad. Yeah. Right. Six of the seven got a phone call or an email. I didn't. I had to watch it with my family live. And Stuart Scott asked Bruce Arena, the first question he asked was MLS MVP Taylor Twelman's not on the roster. And Bruce Arena didn't answer the question. And so that is when in the moment I said, you know what? Whoa, wait a minute. I had four players from that team. The moment they saw the news, call me and basically say, why am I going and you're not? None. I'm telling you all of that to give you background on that told me I did the most, I did the best I could. Yeah. I literally did the best I could because if I wasn't good enough, if I didn't deliver, if I didn't deserve it, none of my teammates would have called me and given me that answer. Yeah. They would have called me and you guys know this. They would have given me a different answer. Been like, Oh man, I'm sorry. They literally called pissed off. They called like what the, what the assistant coach, He's passed away now. He literally called my dad and apologized. So I I give that background to your listeners because in life, when you know you gave it 100%, there really are no regrets. If there's any inkling of, oh, I should have done this or I didn't this, that's where bitterness kind of takes over. And when my grandfather passed away literally 48 hours, and he's the one that won a World Series with the Yankees and played in in Major League Baseball, for 11 years, my entire mom's side of the family is celebrating this man's life. And I am on ESPN the day before the funeral playing an MLS game where the 30,000 people at Gillette Stadium had a huge sign, why not Taylor? And I was like, this is, wait, this isn't about me. This is a celebration of my family. So honestly, Dan, like it put it in perspective for me. I'm not gonna lie and look into this camera and tell you guys, that I still don't think about it yeah. because my biggest regret is not wearing the red, white, and blue and honestly running through the wall and getting one of my seven concussions playing with the U S in a world cup that ended my career. That's I think about that all the time. I watched the game today thinking, did I really not go on the other hand? It happens, dude, shit happens. And the best part that I can say is I can look in the camera, look you and look everyone in the, in the mirror and say, guess what? I did it. I did the best I could. I scored a ton of goals. And the manager that given day was like, you know what? I don't want him to be part of the team. I've got to find a way to live with that. And fortunately enough, I've got enough grace to understand it. But I ain't going to lie to you guys. You know me well enough. It's not easy. Yeah. yeah. But it is what it is. And we've got to move on. And I have actually, in a weird way, I have, even though 
I just rambled for 10 minutes about the background, but I think but the, the listeners would appreciate it, that. It, it was a great answer, and it's why I asked the question, because I knew, like, your perspective on it, and it's it's just a great lesson for people to listen to, because there's a lot of people who play woe is me and, and, and always become the victim, and it's like, that's just not, the, like, you can't well, let me think ask you like guys. You guys, uh -huh. you guys do this in, in life. We got to hear the word no more. Yeah. We just fail more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you don't I, I hear no, I you're not feel, you're not I, pushing hard I, enough. Yeah, yeah, like I just feel like in my failures, I've learned way more about myself. And I tell everyone this: like everyone says, adversity builds character. Shit, shit. Adversity reveals character because if you say adversity builds character, guess what that means? All of us started at ground zero, and we've and we've got no character. Yeah, like miss me with that. We've all got character. It's when it's when it hits the fan, you got to be like, I, who am I? Who am I going to be the guy? I'll talk about it with people, it, but I don't go to bed at night with a bitter part of my body because, like I just said to you, it happens. I'm unfortunately one of those guys. I'm going to own my story. I'm going to tell that story because I think it gives perspective to some people that are struggling. But I feel like our generations now, guys, we hear no or we hear constructive criticism and everybody's all out of whack and like, Oh my God, it, this is wrong. You're wrong. And the teacher's wrong. And the coach is wrong. It's like, are they? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's great. And, uh, I'll say it for you. Fuck Bruce Sabrina. Um, <laughs> I'll just say that for you. Uh, yep. yeah. You, you'll say it too, right? Bru Pete? Fuck Bruce Arena. Yeah. Fuck Bruce Arena. He's but, a great coach. Great college coach. Yeah. But fuck Bruce also, Arena. Oh come on, guys! He, he's had a hell of a career. No, he's he's he's, he's a bum. He's he, a, he's a crumb bum. <laughs> Oliver Kahn ate his lunch in 2002. <laughs> he's a crumb bum, and uh, but no, I, I I really do appreciate you telling that because it it is a great message, and it's something that uh you know like when like when I listen to you on ESPN or I follow you on Twitter, like knowing the backstory, it's like this guy's not just you know talking out of his ass he he played it he went through adversity he did all these things like it just adds a lot more flavor to your analysis did it, so. did it feel good in 2006 a little bit when uh we didn't get a single win oh man that's that's that <laughs> no it actually and i'm telling you no i not I've even a little bit told anyone this. i don't know if i watched the games oh i wouldn't yeah i don't know if i watched them i may have been in the room I may have been with my teammates and at the New England Revolution. I'm not totally sure I watched that game. I think I put myself in such a space that I wasn't present. And when we didn't get out of the group, we struggled to score goals. I honestly could not taste food. I couldn't feel anything. It made it worse to me because I know, and I don't care what anyone tries to tell me, I would have added something to that group. Yeah. I would have done something to that group, even being on the field or running through a wall or doing something to energize the group, to give them something. Because in that moment, I was on the verge of going to England. I was on the verge of doing uh, – guys, people don't know this. Kicker Magazine in Germany listed 10 players to break out the World Cup. I was number nine. That's I didn't tough. go. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy Just shit. That. That's right? So, like – but then you look around the world. There was a great goal scorer for Bayern Munich named Roy Mackay that played for the Dutch. He got left off the World Cup team. Jaden Sand, like, look at the people that got left off the World Cup teams this year. Landon Donovan in 2014 felt the same thing. I just, it, I didn't, I don't know if I watched the games in 06 to go back to your question. I just well, don't know if I really watched them. Well, I don't know if I did. You probably also didn't watch them because soccer is super boring and terrible to so watch. boring I, and who wants to watch that sport someone was diving and rolling all that, over. that would be funny if you were just like fuck this i'm watching baseball which is like way more boring but whatever